Hi, uh, welcome to the K3S Providing Developers the Edge in Turnkey Deployments talk at the ARM Dev Summit. My name is Mark Abrams, and I'm a field engineer edge specialist with Rancher Labs. I want to talk to you today about uh, turnkey or edge appliances. Um, turnkey is a way to deliver software and hardware in a package that's uh, easily manageable, usable by end users. Um, so, you know, let's let's define turnkey and what I mean by turnkey. I think you all know what that means, um, but it's really um, a device that ends up um, with the end user having full access to the solution simply by plugging it in or turning it on. Um, we see this a lot in um, home, uh, you know, home network options. Um, you'll see it in like things if you've ever used a Hue Bridge or even your smartwatch, some of the Wi-Fi, the modern Wi-Fi routers. You plug them in, you go visit an access point, uh, you do some configuration, some customization for, for your use case, for your personalization, and then you suddenly have this turnkey device that's just functioning and, and it's fairly simple to use and, and get running. Uh, this was not always the case. Um, and especially in um, the business scenario, and I'll use um, sort of the retail branch use case where um, it's often been the case they've been doing edge for quite a while, um, meaning they have computers in stores, um, but to get those computers up and running, for example, they would uh, have to ship the computer over and then they'd have to come have an individual, a human, come in uh, via sneaker net, we call it, and they would plug in a, a CD or, or a USB stick, do some configuration, do some installation, and customize it for that geographic place, for that specific uh, use case, maybe for the types of products that were purchased for that store. Um, and then um, one of the things that, that um, so that that's sort of where Edge has been. Turnkey gives us the ability to, to simplify it and make it more easy to use, right? Um, some level of connectivity uh, tends to be required, um, although we expect some network latency um, in these Edge sites. Um, we expect disconnected networks. Uh, we expect zero trust security, meaning just, you know, don't trust anything. <laughs> um, and so, that's pretty much turnkey. And what I'd like to do with you now is share <clears throat> share with you um, how we can use container orchestration for uh, building and delivering turnkey devices. So container orchestration may not be the first thing that you turn to um, when you're thinking about turnkey devices, and especially if you've been an embedded systems developer. Um, but um, K3S is a lightweight Kubernetes, and it's a Kubernetes distribution. Uh, Kubernetes is container orchestration. And, you know, why use it at the edge? Well, you know, why not just simply just build an embedded system um, or, for that matter, just run some Docker containers? Um, and, and these are totally possible. These are happening now, right? The, these, there, there are reasons to do these things. Um, but to, to move into container orchestration, you, you actually achieve a few things. One is you can start to align your process with the way software is developed in other parts of the enterprise. So if you're using uh, container orchestration and containers as a solution in uh, your web stack, you can also use that all the way out to the edge. And so that part of the process can be very similar in the, in the data center, we're trying to achieve this, you know, sort of uh, zero release time, uh, where where we can release at any time and and have code updates and and make that happen through uh, CI/CD or through GitOps. Um, the edge has been sort of um, defined by very specific devices that are hard to update, whether I'm doing sneaker net or if I need to do some sort of um, an embedded system firmware upgrade. Um, Kubernetes can help us get past all of that. Um, the, the edge is, you know, I define the edge as anything that's not the data center, right? It's, it's not in my data center, it's in someone else's data center, but I need to access it 
or um, it's really, it's remote and the edge can get very far out, uh, what we call the far edge. And there's lots of places in between. Um, another reason to use Kubernetes is that it allows us to declare the system desired state. So I can um, just, declare the state that I want this edge device to be in, and Kubernetes will um, provide me the facilities to make that happen. It's uh, built to manage containers, so you don't have to. So this is really, you know, don't stop at using a container solution. Take it to the next level where the containers are managed for you. You don't need to write all the scripts and the instrumentation to schedule a network and all of those things. Um, in addition, K3S helps us isolate the hardware from the software. So um, K3S, by the way, it, it can manage hardware and software components. Um, so you can do things um, like manage the uh, devices on the hardware. And traditionally, Kubernetes was designed for the data center for stateless workloads that had homogenous resources, uh, CPU and RAM, and, and they were just pulled together. And you, you didn't really know what device your solution was running on, but it didn't matter. You were guaranteed to get CPU and RAM. But some of the functionality, and I'll show you this in the presentation, some of the, the features and functionality there um, are valuable even when you're dealing with uh, capturing the hardware and use, utilization of the hardware level, especially at the edge. Um, so we can easily upgrade, update without flashing all the firmware. We can even upgrade the operating system through Kubernetes. We can provide uh, reliability, availability, scalability to our applications and the things that it's running. So with that, um, let's look at actually some, some turnkey use cases. And so, Day in and day out, my uh, my job as a field engineer edge specialist is talking with our customers and prospects about the work that they're doing, um, both in the data center and at the edge, and understanding their problem domain, and then helping them uh, find solutions. And obviously, they, they come to us and want to talk to me because they have specific needs at the edge. So I, I see a lot of this. I see a lot of verticals. Um, here are some. So retail and branch, and this is, you know, I mentioned the, the retail before, but this is everything from burger joints to department stores, um, banks, casinos, all these places have some sort of compute, some with more power than others. Um, they run all sorts of applications on them. Um, the next one is industrial IoT. We've got uh, like factories and warehouses and, um, you know, they typically have um, these sites with multiple buildings that are all networked together, but they're cordoned off from the rest of the world. Somewhere in each of those buildings, they'll have some sort of um, a gateway that will allow things inside to send messages outside. Um, and they'll use some sort of messaging protocol. They also tend to have uh, machine learning inference systems. And if not already having those, they're building those. And then um, they also have redundant systems, right? So I, I may need to have a camera someplace, but I want a secondary camera uh, to take over if the first camera goes out. Um, th and then finally, there, there are even some resource heavy um, solutions, some um, use cases where we see in telco gateways, we see log analyzers, uh, financial services, these are often large, high-performance computing, not what you think of at the edge. It's not just small devices. Um, they often, uh, AI is a big part of this. Um, they do things like threat detection and response, um, software-defined networking. Um, and of course, these are not hard and fast categories. Um, for example, in the energy vertical, we often hear about um, really specialized equipment, which is capable of very powerful compute. It falls into that resource heavy category to manipulate physical systems and to process large quantities of data. Um, often, so in that use case and in all of these use cases, we end up with a situation where the people in the environment, it's not a data center IT operation staff. They at best know how to run the software that's running on these systems, but they're not trained in how to install, update, manage. And that's why they had sneaker net. Um, so, with that, let's let's look additionally at some sort of what I'd say the world of tomorrow, some future use cases. And 
the, I don't know. For this group, most of you are probably technical, and these are not really the future. They're, they, you know, they're happening now, right? Um, we're already seeing autonomous vehicles at smart cities. Depending where you live, they may be touching you today. Um, the, you know, the interesting thing with the social change with the pandemic is uh, thermal cameras being placed into public spaces to try and get a, um, a feel for, you know, is somebody sick before they enter this public space? Um, so there are a lot of use cases. I think, you know, you, you get the idea here, right? There are a lot of use cases for turnkey systems where we just need to deliver a device, get it set up, get it running and, and uh, have it work well and consistently. I'm going to give you now um, an example turnkey solution. And uh, the, the problem statement is that um, this was a marketing giveaway. It, it still is. Um, it turned into not only a marketing giveaway, but also a toolkit for my colleagues to use in the field. Um, and unfortunately, we haven't been in the field as much these days. Um, but essentially, the, the problem was brought to me. Um, I, I was doing some things with Kubernetes on ARM devices, and uh, especially like Raspberry Pis and hobbyist devices. And and uh, Rancher Labs team, the marketing team asked me if I could kind of create something that we could give away at conferences and events. And actually, they they there was an event giveaway this this week. Um, they gave me these constraints: a hundred dollar budget. It highlights uh, K3S, this lightweight Kubernetes project, and can demonstrate the simplicity of use. So um, I already had some ideas, and um, with that, you know, I was able to basically take this and run with it. Um, I went out and got, you know, a 4-gig Raspberry Pi, a 16-gig SD card. Um, I, I built the case, um, but I had it printed elsewhere, so it was 20 bucks. And uh, you can get cases for cheaper than that. And I needed a power supply, right? Um, Anybody with this set of resources can can install K3S, which again, remember that was the end software goal. Um, for retail, um, it's going to be a POS system or you know the machine driver that they're they're trying to use. The barrier to entry, um, so installing K3S is pretty easy, but but getting it up and running from a pile of hardware is less easy, right? Even if I assemble, they put the thing in the case for you and stick the SD card in, that SD card's got to be imaged and ready to go. So um, what I did is um, I, um, oh, and that last slide was actually a duplicate. I already talked about this. Here's a picture of the device. So, um, so this is the device that ended up, uh, we ended up shipping as this turnkey solution. And um, the this is, uh, and I know this is really hard to read, but this was the first iteration. So I was providing, um, the marketing team wanted to get this out right away, right? They want to give away something. So super cool. We're giving away Raspberry Pis, and they got a custom case that's got our logo on it. But um, the SD card had noobs, if you don't know. Um, that's a Raspberry Pi um, pre-baked image that provides like five different options to install. It, it in and of itself is a bit of a turnkey solution. If you're technical, if you play with operating systems um, and hardware, this is, you know, table stakes, right? But for a lot of people, for your uh, CTO, your CIO, um, and um, people who are interested but don't know what to do with it, the, this really gives you five different options. Um, you know, you can install a media server, you can install Raspbian Lite, you can install Raspbian with the full UI. There are a couple others too. But if I give you this setup, there's no telling what you'll do. It, and that's not what I was asked to do, right? I, I, I was tasked with giving you something that can run Kubernetes um, the, and the Kubernetes uh, system. So regardless, we settled on this briefly. Um, it's actually quite a complicated uh, solution because you have to in choose your OS and we walk you through that in the instructions here. Then you gotta get your network set up. And once that's set up, then you have to install K3S. And uh, so it's not the simplest of processes, um, although it was a good first start, but I know I could do better. So in the, in the solution that we ship now, um, essentially 
I ended up imaging a card with this turnkey solution, and I'm going to share that that with you. Uh, it is um, in the public domain. It is a GitHub project. I'm going to share it with you, um, and you'll see that really fairly simply, you could take this and turn it into your own turnkey solution. Um, conceptually, the, the real takeaway from this is that you can control the hardware through Kubernetes. So if there is a device you want to control, if there is a sensor or an actuator that you want to control from Kubernetes, you can do it. You can do it securely. You don't have to do it in a privileged way. Um, and Kubernetes gives you the full control to do so. And I'll prove it to you. Um, so in this, in this giveaway, I, I created the solution that I wanted, right? This now, the way it works for these end users is that they plug it in, they go to um, this network on another device, um, like their mobile phone, and select the K3S, the configure K3S network. Then they can log in through their browser and um, select the local network, the SSID they want this device to be connected to, which, of course, I have no way of knowing that before we before I sent them this device. And then after a few minutes, they're going to have access to a Kubernetes cluster that they can run, uh, you know, kubectl and other Kubernetes API commands against. Um, so with that, I'd like to show you the demo of this and, and uh, show you how this looks um, in real life. So let's visualize the, the end product here. So this starts in the terminal. And what I first do is I just give you the date uh, so you can see what time it is. It's um, about 1026 in this uh, representation. And you can see I try and access the device, but I can't get to it. It's just hanging up. So I go to the network and internet on my phone, which is on the left-hand side. I find the K3S network. I go to configure K3S, and then I switch back to my browser. Now, in the browser, I go to that URL, and then I select the project that we want to go into. You see install project. There's only one here. In this will have more options soon. Then I choose the SSID and I put in my cr credentials. And now I say connect and it reboots K3S for me. And now I stop trying to log into Raspberry Pi. I've clipped the video a little bit so that we, we don't have to wait the whole time. Um, and then finally, I log into the Raspberry Pi. I enter my credentials for the Raspberry Pi, and uh, you can see I'm now in, and it's basically turned over to be on the network that I wanted it to be on. And now I'm just running Kubernetes commands, kubectl get node, kubectl get pods. And you can see once I do this, um, and that's the, the turnkey namespace, there are some things running. I'll talk about those components in a moment. Um, and then finally, at uh, 10, 28, two, 33, two and a half minutes later, approximately, we're up and running. So quite a difference from the initial deployment. So let me, let me, let's talk about the architecture for this solution. Um, because th this is where we really get into, you know, Kubernetes was designed for stateless workloads. Um, and, uh, but it can manage the devices of your hardware as well. You just don't get that opportunity in the data center quite as much. Um, so this is just the general architecture. Here I've got at the base layer, I've got the ARM device, um, which in this case is a Raspberry Pi. And I've got um, my operating system. Uh, it's Raspbian in this case. You can see in the operating system, I've got the, the network manager is WPA supplicant. I've turned it off. So typically in the Raspbian operating system, out of the box, it will um, enable WPA supplicant and kind of allow me to create some configuration, which is what we were doing through that, through that process that we were walking people through. Um, I've stopped using system D to run the uh, network manager. Instead, you can see up in the K3S, in the Kubernetes space, I have WPA supplicant. So I'm going to run the network manager from Kubernetes. And th this is really interesting, right? In my first, one of the first attempts while I was working on this project, I thought, well, why don't I run the supervisor? Why don't I run system control in a container? But that just requires too many privileges and it doesn't work out well. But then I thought about it. I said, well, I, I don't really need the supervisor. K3S actually has all of the capabilities of the supervisor. K3S can manage my requirements and 
um, enable me to have that availability and scalability that I'm looking for in my workloads as well. And then, of course, you can see I've got on the left my two network interfaces, and those will come into play in just a moment. So um, let's let's look at uh, just the code and process, and uh, we'll come back to the visuals in just a minute. Okay, so here's the process to build the device. On the one hand, I'm shipping a device that uh, has a pre-baked image, but how did I get to that image? Um, so here's the repository, uh, github.com slash mak3r slash turnkey. You can go there, you can check out this for yourself. Essentially, um, this code is really scripted. There's a, there's a script to run this, the process may have changed, but ultimately it comes down to about seven steps. So um, first of all, I need to I need to get K3S on this device. So and um, at this point in time when I built this, um, we did not have the ability to do um, ARM based um, air gapped installations. So I had to turn on the Ethernet network. And um, by the way, today you can do ARM based um, air gap. Uh, installation. So I could do all of this just um, with using a USB stick. I don't have to connect to the network at all. Um, so the second step then is install K3S. This is I'm pulling down from the network. Um, then after that, the next step is to make sure that there's a temporary network for K3S to start up. So Kubernetes needs um, a host network. And I do that by setting uh, the some information into rc.local about the routes and the IP addresses that I want it to use on the Ethernet NIC. And then uh, step four, I add in a couple of files to the manifest directory. K3S uh, will automatically look in that directory and pick up those files and run them using kubectl apply. So I know that whatever I put in there is automatically going to get loaded into Kubernetes. Um, then I configure my resolve.conf for Kubernetes. And I start with the, the Ethernet network, but later on using Kubernetes, I'm going to write to this file and um, actually change it over to the network, uh, to the name server that I pick up from the um, from the end users network. There may be a bug in here um, as it, it looks like, you know, if people have a special name server different than their gateway, I'm really picking up the gateway and using it as the name server in my space that works. Um, this next step, stop uh, K3S and basically image the card and we're ready to go. Um, so let's look at that from like the visual perspective, okay? So here we see, um, the power state is off and um, I've got, you know, everything I showed you before where WPA supplicant network management management is off in the operating system. K3S is ready to go. I plug the device in, I turn it on and three containers get deployed and I'm connected to the Ethernet NIC. I'm connected to Ethernet, remember, because I put some information in our rc.local and I set up the resolve.conf to tell Kubernetes to tell K3S use the rc.local. Then when the um, these three containers come up, my WPA supplicant is actually going to um, scan the network for SSIDs in the area. So, so it's gonna start looking. The other two, the custom UI and the host APD won't be able to start actually until the, um, the the network that until I find those SSIDs. If there are no SSIDs around, um, it'll error out. So um, once once that happens, once we get the um, the the list of networks, then I disable the WPA supplicant in K3S, and I switch over to using the Wi-Fi NIC as an access point. So this is host APD. Host APD, by the way, is similar to the Network Manager WPA Supplicant. Uh, it functions similarly, uses a similar configuration file. However, it is the host access point daemon. So um, this allows me to basically host an access point, which I'm going to have the end user come into that custom UI, as you saw in the in the uh, video. And they're going to enter the information that I need to set this site up. I'm only picking up 
their SSID and credentials. This could be a store ID. Um, it could prep me to connect to um, some specific external location, some internal location. I can collect any data we need here, right? In this case, I just needed that SSID. So once these, these jobs finish, um, we're going to disable the, the jobs end, and that's a Kubernetes thing. So my jobs end, and then WPA supplicant's going to come back up. We're actually going to restart um, K3S to start back up using the host network that was specified by the end user. So now um, WPA supplicant in K3S is actually uh, running against the Wi-Fi NIC, and it's it's um, all the traffic is going to go through there. And I've updated my resolve.conf as well. So um, going through that sort of in code, right? Setting up the access point, as I said, uses a Kubernetes job type. And um, this is one of the really interesting things about Kubernetes. So um, I'm using Kubernetes as a replacement for my supervisor, system control, right? For, for system D. Um, I, took, I took control of the thing I wanted from system D. I put it into a container, and then Kubernetes gives me all these, these facilities to manage dependencies, manage lifecycle, things like that. So the, the job is used in this case um, because I really only want the UI, uh, which is the, the one on the top here. So you can see the job turnkey UI. Um, and that's um, and there's an init container that scans. That was my Wi-Fi scan with WPA supplicant. But then there's this UI container that's going to start up. And what you don't see here is um, the host APD container. But basically, these this job just ends. Once the user has given me the information I need, I no longer need this. And what I do is I actually I write out um, the Wi-Fi configuration um, to a... I, I write it out in two ways. I write it out to a Kubernetes YAML. So it will start, uh, it's actually the same container just started with different arguments, this Wi-Fi uh, version 0 .0 0.0.10. Um, it starts that in, in a different process and gives me information about the configuration, which is kept in a secret, uh, Kubernetes secret. So all of that is written out to the manifest directory so that when K3S restarts, um, I have now connected to the correct network. So um, here is the Wi-Fi um, information that gets written out. And at this point now, I've just got WPA supplicant running in K3S. Um, if for whatever reason that, that dies, K3S will bring it back for me. And, um, you know, I've got a full-blown Kubernetes system on my network. So... That's it for my talk. Thanks for joining me. I'm really uh, excited to share this turnkey solution with you, and I'm really interested in hearing your feedback. Please reach out to me. Um, contribute. Uh, we have a Slack channel, slack.rancher.com. I think rancher.io maybe. And uh, of course, the, the turnkey solution. Um, love to hear from you. Love to hear your stories. Love to engage with you about other turnkey solutions. Thank you very much.